Today on the Justice Court, Olamile Kong and other contestants for the House of Nico reality TV show are suing the organizer of the show, Kadatone Concept Entertainment, for not fulfilling all promises made to them before the show. All right. Court in session. Honorable Judge Fumi Asaolu presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, this case is between Olami Lekon and others versus House of Nicolas Reality TV show by Sidaton Concept. Thank you. Parties Thank, you. Note. Thank you. You're welcome, Your Honor. So, can you all introduce yourself? My name is Olami Lekon Shoemimo. My name is Sheyi Ashwaju. My name is Olaista Jayola. I'm Alright. Okay, so why are you here? We are here because of a case between we and House of Nico, a reality TV show. Okay, what happened? We saw the advert online in August and we all registered. Registration was free. Then entering into September, they were giving us tasks online, tasks about our talents. The promises were a car for the winner, uh, 3 million naira, career support services, then 14 days in the house, luxury house, all things provided, like that, like that. So we're doing tasks September, October, November. When you do your task, you get another one every week like that. So eventually, we got into the house December 9. And from that day, we started noticing some of the things they said were changing. I won't forget, we were told to get 2,000 votes to be in the house, and a vote was 50 naira. So get 2,000 votes to be in the house. Get followers for us on Instagram. Those are the things we did before getting into the house. Now, getting into the house, they won, the organizer was talking to us, and he said, you guys will be here for 10 days. Meanwhile, he said 14 days before we came. We were promised some clothing items about four. We didn't get, we, get, we got only one. Then we were promised cameras everywhere. When we got into the house, there was no camera. And then the um, duration for broadcast every night was just 30 minutes. According to him, he wants to convert our talents to wealth by showing us to the world but that was not the case when we got there. A day before entering into the house, we got another message that says, if you are the first to get to 500,000 votes, you will be the winner. And as at then, the price had changed from 15 naira to 200. He took it to 500, but within 24 hours, he brought it down to 200 naira. We got into the house and whenever he gives us phone, we try to chat with our people to keep voting, keep voting, things like we were can canvassing and campaigning for votes, and it was virtually on our neck every now and then talking about votes. How many of you were in the house? We were 18. We left the place December 16, four, around 4 o'clock, without food. The program was aired on the 17th, second day after leaving, and also on the 18th. 18th. In fact, one of us had to communicate with WAP TV to bring down the program. Somebody saying, vote for your contestant, and we, the contestants, are already at home. That's the exploitation on the general public. What do you call the name of the company? H O N, House of Nico Reality TV. It was aired on WAP TV. What did Sponsored you say? by Seda It was aired on WAP TV. But the major thing is money, 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 voting, voting, voting. Money has gone in like unnumbered. He declared the winner, but we saw something. We saw that the win, according to the website, there is a, there's an information, terms and conditions, that says relative this, that should not, including for employees. Now, the winner that I told you, she already they, had, they declared, the declared, the declared winner, that we said already had more than the required vote. Hmm. 500,000 votes to be the winner was changed within 48 hours to 10 million votes because she surpassed 500,000. And we don't even know if she was voting by money or somebody was just changing the figure behind the scene. 
But what happened was that we discovered that the lady had been with him for at least more than 24 months, more than two years. Well, you did not sign any contracts before going in. No. But they stated all the yes. requirements on their website. You submitted. Yes. Registration. And they shortlisted you. Yes. yes. So that means you must have met the requirements. Yes. Before you were taken into the house. Now, House of Nicholas yes, reality yes. TV show in affiliation with Cedar Tool yes. Concept Nigeria yes. Limited. I hope you've heard the allegation against you. The defendant is not in court. After the break, Judge Fumi adjourns this matter. So we wait for their response. All right, arise. All right. Continuing, the plaintiff, Chiamaka Obidiegu, is suing God's power for the sum of 380,000 naira, a refund for the cost of purchase and treatment for an American Eskimo species of dog she bought. All rise. Court in session. Honorable Judge Fumi Asaolu presiding. Please be seated. You all know, this case is between Chair Maka and Gus Power. Parties sworn on oath. Thank you, Ake. You're welcome. Chair Maka. Obi Deko. Yes. You are the one suing Gus Power, Udo Fair. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. How did you meet him? How long ago have you known him? Okay. Um, I actually don't know, really know him. Okay. We just met like, um, that was last year, September. He actually came to deliver um, a pet dog to whoever he came to deliver it to. Okay, me seeing the dog and falling for it, I asked him how, uh, okay, I love this and if he's selling it, he was like, oh, he sells and then, uh, but he's gonna get some uh, another one for me because the one he actually was with is to be delivered to somebody, so, Okay, we're actually deliberating on price. He told me 500,000 and I was like, for what? That's too outrageous for a dog. So we actually came to, after long deliberation and all that, we actually came to an agreement of 300. So after um, a week later, only for me to notice that this dog wasn't actually looking so healthy and it wasn't, he wasn't as jovial as he used to be for just the week he was with me. And I called to his attention and he was like, okay, he would need to send some money to treat the dog and all that. Even before he brought the dog to me. Is when, he a vet doctor? Ma? Is he a vet doctor? I'm not sure. I didn't even know. Not until all this happened, then I realized that he's not even the seller. Like he doesn't even know anything about dogs. He just delivered for a friend of his. So um, a week later, I got to realize that the dog wasn't um, soundy and he wasn't jovial at all. I called to his attention and he was like, oh, he will need so and so amount of money to take the dog to the vet because I'm a busy person. I don't actually have time and I don't actually know th anything about dogs. So. He told me he would need, was it 150? He said, yeah, thereabouts to treat. I was like, 150 for what? Just to treat a dog. So after long talk and all that, he said I should give him 80. I said, I can't give you 80. I'm just going to give you what I have. And what I have is 20. So he said, no, this one, 20 can't do anything, that the dog is, he needs to buy the food and all that, all this, all that. So talk, as in after so much talk and all that, I said, okay, no problem. He said, no problem, rather, that I should bring 40. All right, I gave him 40, and then um, only for him to call me, like, was it a week and a few days later again, that the dog is not improving. 
And I was like, so the money I gave you, what did you use it for? Like, I don't understand. You calling me back to tell me the dog is not improving. I was like, I don't understand. Are you trying to extort money from me? Or you're just trying to, do you think I'm picking that you can or just use this small opportunity to be extorting money from me? I don't have that such, um, I don't have such amount of money to give him. So I was like, okay, I should, I should bring the 40 that I brought the last time that he will add it with the little he has to complete the treatment of the dog. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, really, okay, fine. I gave it to him. And <laughs> only for me to realize that that was like after two weeks or thereabouts, I was not here. I didn't get any feedback from him consigning it. God's power, how far? Whenever he sees my call, he hang up. Whenever he sees, he's just always trying to dodge one or the other. Not until the, uh, I went to meet the person I saw him with the first day he went to deliver the dog. And I was like, oh, how did this, how do you know this person? Then he told me, oh, it is one of his friends that the person that just came to deliver the dog was just a barber. That he's not even, he doesn't actually have any idea concerning dogs and all that. I was like, really? So that was actually uh, when I got to get him, actually, after he was refusing my calls and hanging up and all that. So I now asked him how far with the dog. Then he just had to come out playing to... Madam, I'm sorry, oh, the dog could not make it and all this. And I'm like, I just told him, see, I don't even want to hear that story. Just give me the dog or you provide all the money I've, I've given to you. Either of those two, like, I'm not listening to whatever story you're saying. So he has been pleading and all, oh, pleading. Like, pleading will not solve this matter. It's either you give me the dog or you give me my money. That's fine. What do you have to say? I've played with her. I told her that I'll give her the money. First of all, what you are telling this court is that everything she said is the correct position of what transpired between the two of you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. your honor. And now you've been pleading with her that you will pay her. Hmm? Is that what you just said? I, but I don't, I don't really know where to get money or how to get money. But well, you've told her that you are ready to pay her, just that you don't have the money right now. I don't know where to get the money or how to get the money. But I just, I'm just telling you so that first I will just calm her down. First of all, I want you to narrate to me what actually happened to the dog. When you took the dog, where did you get the dog from? How much was the dog sold to you? Um, the dog was, my friend from Abuja sent the dog to me. So because I've asked some of my friends here, they said they don't have that kind of species of dog that she wants. So I, I told my friend from Abuja, he's the one that sent the dog to me. I, mean, I, did, I did not even know that the dog, is not, the dog is not feeling fine or is not okay. How long was the dog with you before you handed it over to her? The dog arrived to Lagos around 6, 6 p.m. The next morning, I, I took the dog to her. Okay. So how much was the dog sold to you? Dog, he did not sell the dog to me because I, did not, I cannot afford the money. So I, I told him that I'm going, to, I'm going to sell the dog to her. Then the money that she gave to me, I sent it to him in Abuja. So he will give me my percentage. OK. So you had that agreement? Yes. OK. So you collected your, you got the money, you sent it to him, yes. and you retained your own percentage out of it? Yes. Yeah. OK. So thereafter, when she called you that the dog was not looking healthy. Which vet doctor did you take the dog to? I took the dog to my vet doctor. Your vet doctor. How much did you pay them? I I gave him the forty thousand naira. I bought 
some drugs for the dog. You have receipts to prove that you paid the money to the vet doctor and the receipt of what you purchased. Because ordinarily, these are things, even if the dog had survived, the fact that you collected 80,000 Naira, whatever amount of money you collected from her, you have to give her a receipt to show that that money was expended on treatment of the dog. Because that's what the money was meant for. So you should be able to show me evidence that that money was actually even expended on the treatment of the dog. I did not, I did not have the receipt. But I'm, you have the, the, your vet doctor, the one that treated it, you have his phone number. Hey. No, I'm, no. I know you won't have it because I intend to call him. I wanted to call him and find out from him what, what actually was wrong with the dog. So what did he say was wrong with the dog? They must have diagnosed something. The dog was Vomiting blood and pooing mucus. What made the dog to vomit? I don't blood. actually know. They didn't bother to ask either? No. So how much is the total sum involved now that you need to pay her? 380,000 Naira. So that's what you've agreed. You're going to pay her 380,000 Naira. So what is left now is how you are going to pay the money to her. Yes, Your Honor. The defendant, God's Power, Udofia Ababa, says he agreed to refund Chiamaka's 380,000 Naira just to calm her down. Even though he does not know how or where to raise the money, Chiamaka cares less. She wants her dog returned or her money refunded. George Fumi has some advice for both parties. I have an issue. You told the court that you don't normally have time. At the time you purchased the dog, how did you intend to be taking care of the dog? No, oh, I am a lover of pets, actually. So, me seeing the breed, it was actually American Eskimo breed because I had to Google it and everything. And um, I've always wanted to have a pet, even though I knew I didn't have time. But my intention was, okay, me getting the dog, staying, and then as in just for uh, a pet, to be in the house, you understand? So you have the pet in the house. I'm just asking, do you live alone? Of, no, I don't. Okay, so you have people in the house that yeah. can... That's just what I want to know. Okay. That you have people around you. Yeah, I do. That can take care of the dog. Yeah. Okay. And that is it. Now, what transpired between you is... I have to break into two, two different sections. The first is that you had a contract between you on the purchase of the dog. There's what we call buyer's beware, caveat emptor. If I want to purchase a fairly used vehicle, when I'm going down there, I'll go with my mechanic, my rewire. If I don't, if anything goes wrong thereafter, that's my own negligence. At the time when you wanted to purchase the dog, you had an agreement on how much to pay. Yeah. You paid to him. And the next in his specific performance, he performed by delivering the dog to you. The dog didn't fall sick or die. The very day he dropped the dog with you, we were talking about a week after. Well, he said it was with the dog was vomiting blood. I don't know whatever happened, but within that one week, there is no way you can pin it down that what caused the death of the dog occurred when the dog was in his possession. You had concluded that contract. You've taken possession of the dog. The mere fact that you called him thereafter for the treatment of the dog and you even paid him for that show that you have concluded that contract otherwise you would have told him that the dog you brought to me doesn't look okay i need a dog that is healthy 
you won't pay him another sum of money. You will reject that dog and demand for a new one. Now, on the issue of treatment of the dog, he cannot prove to me that that 80,000 Naira was even given to the vets. That he even, he even took the dog to a vet doctor. He can't even prove that. Because I requested for the phone number of the vet doctor now, it was dodgy. So as far as I'm concerned, is to pay you that 80,000 Naira that I collected for the treatment of the, of the dog. You ought to have gotten an expert, a vet doctor or somebody to help you look at the dog that you were buying to be sure of the quality of what you were purchasing. So that's negligence on your part. So when do you want to pay out the 80,000 naira? And I don't want to hear, I don't know when, I don't have money. I don't want to hear anything like that at all. Because you've not been able to convince me that that money was spent on that dog. There's absolutely nothing before the court to show that you even treated that dog. It's possible to have just picked the dog, collect the money and spend the money and drop the dog somewhere. And you wake up later and tell the owner that, did you even see the cops? There are a lot of ways. You understand, you know, when you do things, you don't look at all the implication of what the outcome could be. It's easy to conclude that you even sold the dog to somebody else and you came about to tell her that the dog is dead. I'm just telling you about all the probabilities. Do you understand of what could be assumed to have occurred? So things like that, when it happens next time, you take the picture and send it. Let her be convinced. Let her see it that the dog is actually dead. I was, I was scared because I don't know the way she would take the matter out. And you think she would never know? You were just postponing the evil day. You think she would never demand for the, for the dog? So when do you want to pay her? And how? I don't really, I don't really know. Because I don't, I don't know where to get money from. Please, Diana, I don't want to go to jail. Hmm? Please, Diana, I don't want to go to jail. You don't want to? Go to jail. You don't expect her to lose? You pay 300000 or 250000 naira. She just lost that. Then you rub it again with the 80000 naira. She should just take it and walk away. Does it make sense? Please. Then I will, I will try and pay it next, next year. Okay. Please, I will pay the money before September. This month. How much do you collect on a monthly basis when you're working? It's weekly. How much do you collect on a weekly basis? So, depends on what I work. Sometimes. What range is it? What's the range of what you normally collect? Two, five, three thousand. In a week? Yes. So if what you get is between eight to fourteen or eight to twelve thousand naira on a monthly basis, how much do you intend to start paying on a monthly basis? I don't really know because the two five they give to me, I use to eat and do all that things. You're a very selfish person. Very, very selfish. So you, you can feed and everything and be comfortable, but she can wait till eternity before you pay her. So you pay her when you are ready and when you, at your own pace, that's when you are ready to pay her. Are you ready to be taking 10,000 naira on monthly basis from him? Yeah, I am. 10,000 naira. So that's what you're going to be paying her, 10,000 naira for the next eight months. And if you default, you have issue with the court. 
Do you understand me? I will pay the 10,000. So when will you start paying? Next month. Next month? Yes, you know. Is that, is that okay by you? Yes, you know. All right, then. Judge Fumi helps both parties to reach amicable settlement. She rules after the break. So, this is my judgment. The defendant is to pay the plaintiff the sum of 80,000 Naira. So, from February and on monthly basis, the sum of 10,000 Naira on monthly basis until the total sum of 80,000 Naira is fully paid to the plaintiff. Judgment for the plaintiff. All rise. Have you been cheated or have a dispute and want justice? Don't take laws into your hands. Log on to www.thejusticecourt.com and submit your case.